Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to another video. Previously, I mentioned building a budget PC for playing and hopefully streaming Valorant. I now have all the parts that I need and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I build this PC and we're gonna run some games on it. Now let's get to it. With the Valorant being more and more popular, I had an idea of building a really cheap computer that is more than enough to handle it. I figured that this wouldn't be too hard since the hardware requirements of the game aren't really demanding. I searched the e-commerce available here in the Philippines for parts I could use. I also tried the Facebook marketplace but I wasn't really able to find any good deals. I think it took me 2 or 3 weeks to search for all the parts that I needed. After watching a decent amount of videos from other tech tubers over the years, my eyes got really open to the number of options that are available in terms of hardware. I mention this because of the fact that I used to be one of those people who only knew i3, i5, and i7 processors and thought that the Pentium CPU was garbage. Which it isn't, by the way. Now let's dive into each part I was able to get for this build, starting off with the processor. I went with an Intel Xeon X5450 that I got for 865 pesos or around 17 US dollars. This is my first time dealing with a Xeon processor and looking at the specs, it has a 4-core 4 4-thread 4 with a base clock of 3GHz. However, since this is a 771 socket CPU and the motherboard that we have is a 775, I went ahead and did some modifications to the motherboard socket for it to fit. The GPU of course is the 1390 pesos or 28 US dollar GTX 460 that we've benchmarked in the previous videos. I really think this GPU is more than enough for the games that we plan on playing. For the RAM, I went for a low-profile 2x4GB Kingston running at 1333MHz which is more than enough for what we're going to be using the system for. Honestly, I'm not quite sure what the real difference between a normal RAM and a low-profile RAM is aside from the size. I tried looking it up and some say that they perform exactly the same and it's just that the low profile has a lower clock speed which you can barely notice during actual use. Anyway, I got these for 1240 pesos or around 24 US dollars. The motherboard that I got is an LG A775 socket Asus P5G41T MLXV2, man that is a mouthful which has a built-in integrated graphics that can really be handy for troubleshooting in case your GPU has issues and your CPU doesn't have integrated graphics. I got this for 1,110 pesos or around 22 US dollars. Moving on with the storage, I of course got the 120GB Golden Fur SSD which I compared with my Samsung 860 EVO in this video. It's not in English but feel free to check it out if you're interested. It has a price point of 952 pesos or 19 US dollars. For mass storage, I tried to see if I could get away with just using the 2.5 inch 500GB hard drive that I already had lying around. Although it ran with no issues, loading times, copying and transferring files took forever. I think this hard drive would be available for 500 pesos or $10 but I honestly think that the frustration isn't worth cutting down on your budget. With that being said, I just used the 3.5 inch 500GB HDD in my brother's old PC which can be found for around 800 pesos or $16 in the used market. For the cooling system, I went for a Cooler Master T20 for the CPU and 3 cheap unbranded fans that had unicorn vomit since, well, flashy lights means more performance, right? The case that I went with is a Novus Vertex 910. It's a really cheap and simple case that surprisingly has opportunity for cable management. The front panel could have been better but at a price point of 640 pesos or $13, what more could you ask for? Finally, we have the power supply. When searching for power supplies, I try to look for reputable brands with decent rating as much as possible. However, I had no luck being able to find one that will keep us under the $200 price point. This is actually the first time I'll be using a power supply like this. Uh, it came in pretty dusty and old, so I think that's a factor that will affect the performance. But what made me really go for this power supply is the fact that a lot of computer retailers here in our area always include a generic power supply in their pre-builds and I've never seen a customer complain. But then again, the generic power supplies that they're providing are brand new and this one that I got is really dusty and old looking and just gross. 
But I guess that's what you get when you try to go for very cheap power supplies online. To make things worse, this thing blew up on me while I was testing CSGO. Fortunately, it didn't take any parts with it. I definitely got lucky and although it sucks to have wasted 680 pesos or 13 US dollars, it's still good to have experienced this and learn from it firsthand. I made the mistake so that you don't have to. To still be able to test this PC, I went ahead and used the Cougar power supply that's in my brother's PC which I think would be around 1700 pesos or 34 US dollars in the used market. Moving on to the actual build, the first step was to install the CPU onto the motherboard. It was a very simple step that I managed to screw up, facing the CPU the wrong way, which I ended up correcting later on. Thankfully, I'm not using an AMD CPU where the pins are on the processor, otherwise I would've needed to buy a new one, but then again, if the pins are on the CPU, I probably wouldn't have made that mistake. Installing the RAM was as simple as aligning the notches and applying enough force for both sticks to fit and lock in place. The cooler was pretty easy to install. I started off by installing the bracket and applying a pea-sized thermal paste, and then I installed the cooler which required a good amount of force. The next step is to install the motherboard in the case. I used my new toolkit for this build and it really came in handy with a variety of magnetic tips. I'll put the link to this in the description below just in case you're interested in buying it. I'm not affiliated with the seller but I thought it might help. Moving on, I placed the motherboard in the case to know how many additional standoffs I would need. In this case, I need two more for the bottom. Realizing that I forgot to put the IO shield first, I unscrewed everything with confidence and installed it upside down like an idiot. With the power of learning from my stupidity, I finally placed it correctly and successfully installed the motherboard. I then went ahead and installed the dreaded power supply that was soon to face its inevitable demise. Next, I mounted the 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive that was going to be replaced later on. With the SSD having no moving parts, I installed it at the bottom since when moving the PC around, it will be that part of the case that will be much more prone to impact. Connecting the front panel connectors wasn't really that hard, especially if you pay attention to the guide that's printed on the motherboard. I then installed the GPU and connected all of the power connectors which left me with the final and most important part to install. The Unicorn Vomit Fans These aren't the best fans available out there but airflow is better than no airflow. Having everything installed, the build is finally finished. I can say that I'm satisfied with the cable management that I've done with this build. The system didn't boot it up the first time because of, well, the CPU being placed the wrong way. But after correcting it, the system did work with no issues. Now let's go ahead and run some games to test its performance.
All right, I hope you guys enjoy the music. Now, looking at the results, I can now 100% say that this particular build is targeted at esports title. So, it'll run games like Dota 2, League of Legends, CSGO, Valorant with no issues whatsoever. You can also play Fortnite. You can also play Fortnite with um, decent FPS, average FPS, but um, the occasional stutters will definitely kill your gaming experience, especially if you're in the heat of battle. Now games like PUBG, however, are is just straight up not enjoyable. I won't even recommend someone trying that um, game on this PC just to save them the frustration, but games like Battlefield 1 and Tomb Raider work a bit well. Maybe that's because of the fact that uh, those particular games were released only three to five years after the GTX 460 was released, which is what we're using with this um, PC. Another important thing to mention is that if you really know the games that you're going to be playing with your computer before you actually buy and build it, then it'll be more easier for you to manage your expenses and not end up buying a overkill hardware that you'll end up not being able to take full advantage of. However, if you got money to burn, then go ahead, knock yourself out. I did mention seeing if this uh, PC could stream Valorant and most likely I'll be streaming it on my Facebook. I'll leave my I'll leave the link to my profile in the description below so you guys can check it out if you want to. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys on the next one.